morning. Welcome back to part three of my Tyrolean ski road trip. I wish I could say it was a good morning. I just had a rather rude awakening by a police officer, or at least someone who claims to be a police officer, telling me that since 2001, it's illegal to camp anywhere outside of an official campground in the Tyrol, and that it's a big fine. And I had a choice. I could even pay 70 euros cash now, or you could write me a ticket up and it'd be 220 euros. So naturally, I paid 70 euros, but have I just bribed a police officer? I don't know, maybe. You hear about this sort of thing going on all the time in Eastern Europe, but this is Austria. And for us, I don't even know if he was a police officer. He was in a uniform, but he wasn't, wasn't in a police car. He didn't show me any badge or anything. There are other camper vans parked around here, and he has gone over to at least one of the others, which suggests that maybe he is official, or maybe he's just trying his luck on another vehicle. But yeah, I really don't know, and it's not a great start to the day. 70 euros down, plus I had to go get cash out from the cash machine, which is going to charge me to do that as well, so like 75 euros down for nothing basically. There are no signs anywhere saying no overnight parking. So I don't know how they expect anybody to know this. And it is a free car park. It says on the website free parking. So naturally anyone's going to expect that if you can park here for free, you can stay, stay overnight for free as well. But oh well, it is what it is. I've paid it now. Nothing I can do. The frustrating thing is I give myself a little line this morning because I'm already at the ski centre. So there's no point waking up at the crack of dawn. And my alarm had literally only just gone off when he knocked on the door. If I'd got up at the time I'd been waking up the last few days, I would have already been dressed and had my ski gear. I could have claimed I just parts and just arrived now. So yeah, doubly frustrating. But at the end of the day, I've driven all the way here to ski. I'm still going to ski 70 euros down or not. I'm determined to make the most of today. It's far too easy to make yourself have a shit day when things have got off to a bad start and wallow in self pity. But so, I'm determined not to do that. After all, the sun is nearly out. It's only prompts us to come out a bit later. And on Austria's biggest glacier ski resort. It really is big. There's so much variety here. I think you can comfortably ski here several days in a row without getting bored at this time of year. And I couldn't say that about the other areas I've been to so far. It rained a little bit last night and the skies didn't really clear, which means the snow is nice and soft. It's lovely spring corn. Although that did mean that there's quite big slush moguls even by 9 a.m. But I'll take slush moguls any day over the sheet ice that I had yesterday at Solden. If the sun does come out properly, it might well get pretty sticky later on in the day, but if it stays like this, it could be a lovely day skiing. around about 3,200 meters. I haven't yet worked out which lift is the actual top lift, but yeah, there are several that are over 3,200 meters, all the way down to here. Gamsgarten at about 2,630 meters, which isn't the mid station. There's a mid station at 2,300, but this is kind of like the upper mid station. And yeah, from here, you've got lots of choice. You get up to three glacier basins this side of the hill, or over the back to get more skiing, which I haven't actually discovered yet. Some lift prices of 59 euros and my parking infringement aside the big car park at the bottom of the mountain is free from there you take a, a giant 30 person gondola in two stages up to the mid station here and then from there you're basically on the snow already mostly man-made snow but plenty of it they're currently in the process of building up the fun park here on the back side of the mountain there's some seriously big kickers with some of the steepest landings I've ever seen i'm guessing they must farm the snow because otherwise i can't see where it's come from because, yeah, those jumps are huge. They've moved a hell of a lot of material around, but yeah, don't know where it's come from. Just a reminder, this is still a glacier. It is still dangerous terrain. It might not feel like it, but there are open crevasses, not that far from the edge of the piste.
you do get a lot of your money here. It's the cheapest full price ticket that I've, all the areas have been to so far, and yet it's also the biggest. And most of the infrastructure here is the super modern, super comfy bubble chair lifts or high speed gondolas. Sure, there's the obligatory T bars on the middle of the glacier, but you can ski most of the runs without having to take any of the T bars. Just keep lapping the gondolas and the chair lifts. So, yeah, that's 59 euros goes a hell of a long way here compared to the other resorts. Coming towards the end of the day now, and the snow on the most part has had up pretty well. It's starting to get a little bit grabby on a couple of the flatter sections, but on the whole, the snow is still fast. It's still the nice, soft, quick spring snow. It is, you are worn down all the way to the glacial ice in a few places. So, you need to be careful there because glacial ice isn't just ice, of course. It has lots of stones frozen in it, and if you hit one of those stones, you a good chance of blowing an edge, even though it's only a little small pebble, because it's going to stay stuck in the ice. So yeah, you need to be careful in a few spots, but considering how warm it's been today, I'm quite impressed with how good the snow has lasted here. I don't commend the French very often, but credit where credit's due. There's much to be said about their laissez-faire attitude to life. Indeed, much the rest of the world, especially the German-speaking world, could learn a thing or two from the French. So I've been in Austria a few days now, and I've been told off for skiing on touring bindings on piste. I've been told off for skiing on a closed piste, even though I wasn't even skiing on the closed piste, I was just crossing it to get to the off-piste. And now I've been fined for sleeping in my van in a free car park where there was no sign saying no overnight camping. I'm surprised that I wasn't fined for drinking a beer on the chairlift today and skiing in yellow on a Sunday. In case you haven't noticed, I'm quite bitter about that fine, but anyway, I didn't let it ruin my day today. And now I've got another quite long drive to get to my final stop of the Austrian Tyrolean Glacier ski trip, which is Hintertux, about another two and a half hours from Stubai Gletscher. So this time it is actually quite far away, much further east than all these other, other resorts. So yeah, quite a big drive ahead of me, so I've got a crack on. This whole no camper van situation has really put a sour taste in my mouth for the end of this road trip. I'm not able to properly relax and enjoy myself on what is my final day here, unfortunately. I didn't eat anything last night because I didn't want to get the stove and everything out and draw attention to myself. And I was up before dawn this morning so I could pack the bed away on the off chance somebody did bother me. I'm then not, not sleeping, I'm just parking. I had found a spot which ordinarily would be a perfect spot for a camper van. I was on a very, very minor road, quite deep into the woods, lovely flat spot, beautiful. But yeah, couldn't really relax and enjoy it. And then I've just driven up to the ski centre now and after all that stress I've got here just to find that there's actually dozens of camper vans and motorhomes. There's even one tent set up in the car park already here. There's no signs saying that camper vans are permitted here so presumably it's still just as illegal as everywhere else but clearly either everybody is ignorant like I was or they just don't care here. But either way, still a really annoying situation. I'm now here super early before the lifts actually open and it was clear sky last night so the snow is going to be bullet hard. There's no point in me going up on my touring skis for a couple of hours yet probably, so don't know what to do now, probably go back to bed. Stubai yesterday was unusual in that there's probably more non-racers than racers there, whereas here it's very much looking like it's going to be absolutely monopolised by racers again. The car park's absolutely full of the minivans of various international teams and local ski teams already. There's a massive queue of them waiting for the lift to open. I don't know why. It's as if it's a powder day, but it's not a powder day. They're on race skis and don't need to rush up there because presumably each team's got its own designated spaces on the piece so yeah god knows why they're queuing over half an hour before it opens but that's their prerogative i guess €76 Euros for a day pass makes this the most expensive of the five Tyrolean ski resorts open at the moment, but it is arguably the biggest. Both here and Stubai Gletscher make that claim as being the biggest, but I guess it depends who has which piece open at any given day. Right now, it certainly feels like 
Hintertux has got more ski ball terrain open, but it's, it's fairly marginal. So it may be the biggest, but it's also the slowest to actually get up. It took nearly 40 minutes from leaving the car park to putting skis on and getting on the snow, which is pretty slow, really. At Kunatel, of course, as you drive up there, you put your skis on from the car park, so that's no time at all. In Pittstow, with the funicular, it takes eight minutes to get from the car park to the glacier station. So from car to skis, you can be ready in about 10 minutes, which is pretty damn good. Solden, of course, you also drive up there, so technically you could put your skis on from the car park, but you still need to get a, some kind of lift up from there to start skiing. So maybe 10, 15 minutes to go up one of the gondolas to get to the very top. Stubai, similar to here, but a bit quicker. One big gondola ride all the way up, and you can put your skis on from there, so maybe about 20 minutes before you're skiing. But yeah, here, two big gondolas just to get up to the glacier station, and then from there, you can't ski, you still need to get another gondola up somewhere before you're skiing, so yeah, it's pretty slow. Right now, as expected, it's still bullet hard, it's even 10.30, and I'm struggling just to stand up right here, right now. It's better, of course, on that side, the sunny side, but the queues for that lift, it was just, just insane, so it wasn't really worth the wait. When I could be skiing, even if it is bullet hard ice on this side. I sucked it up and joined the massive queue to come up this side and hope to find some softer snow. It's frustrating that there's so many ski racers on this side, they don't want softening snow, they want bullet hard ice, so I don't want to keep them all over there, but it is what it is. Another reason why it's so busy on this side is that. Fun park. Possibly the biggest fun park that's currently open anywhere in the world. Certainly the biggest in the Northern Hemisphere. So, loads of park rats here. Pretty impressive to watch. It's not just the massive kickers here in the fun park, the biggest of which is still being shaped. It's also got an extensive rail park as well. Got everything from pipes, boxes, single rails, double rails, rainbow rails, S rails, you name it, it's probably here somewhere. You might not have heard of Hintertux itself, but there's a reasonable chance you've heard of the Zillatau, which is the wider area which it forms part of in winter. Even if you've not heard of Zillatau, you almost certainly heard of Meyerhofen, which is the crown jewels of the Zillertal ski area. It's one of the poshest and swankiest ski areas in Austria. Not just the fun part they've got here, they've also got freestyle moguls, complete with kickers. Those kids looked about 10, the second one was actually pretty good. Conditions must be pretty horrific right now with the icy snow. Obviously no one's hitting the kickers because the landing is just basically frozen blocks of ice. But yeah, still kind of impressive. That was Hintertux. Pretty icy for the most part, but it'd soften up on most aspects by the end of the day. This is it now, as far as my plan goes for this trip. From now on in, I'm into the unknown. I've done the five Austrian Tyrolean resorts. There is more skiing I could do, but it requires a little bit more effort, a little bit more planning. So, not sure what I'm gonna do yet. Certainly for the next couple of days, the weather's not great, so that may well dictate what I do. But, generally speaking, I've got three options. Either start heading back west and slowly making my way home. Probably take a bit longer than it took to get here, because I'm a lot further east than I was on day one, so maybe take two days, maybe take three days. Or I can head south into Italy, to Pizza and to Freedom, at least I can car camp where I want there. Maybe go to one of the Great Lakes, go for a swim, have a wash, or maybe go to Valsanales for another day of skiing. Or I could keep heading further east, towards Caprun and Zalemsee, and ski at the Kitsteinhorn. But again, that means getting further and further away from home, which is going to make an even longer trip back. So we shall see. For now at least, I'm going to cook and eat some food, as I missed out last night. Start rehydrating, maybe have a beer, and then try and work out what I'm going to do tonight. Given the number of caravans and camper vans that are here and clearly been here for a few days, I might risk it for a biscuit and just stay here. Safety in numbers and all that. I'm not going to get out of Austria today, whatever I do, because I'm in danger of getting a fine regardless, so maybe just stay here.
decided to hit the road and start slowly heading home. If you find anything worthwhile on the way home, then you might get a little post credit scene, but skiing wise, that's it for now for this video. And indeed, that's probably it for me skiing now until the start of the winter season proper. I could have kept traveling on and gone to a couple more resorts at least, but the weather's not great today and tomorrow, so I probably would have ended up wasting at least one day doing nothing. And of course, every day that I'm away, I'm not earning, and it's costing me money, so it's better off I start heading home now. Thankfully, nobody bothered me last night. Well, I was by far and away the least conspicuous of all the camper vans there, and by 7am the car park's starting to fill up with ski races again, and then I just like every other running traffic in the car park. I'm there to ski. So while I may not be permitted to park there, I guess it's tolerated at the very least. Have I enjoyed this little ski road trip? Absolutely. Will I be doing it again next year? Absolutely not. There are other, more van friendly places to be visiting, so maybe next year I'll go to Italy or Switzerland instead. But yeah, I definitely will not be coming back to Austria on a road trip, that's for sure. The highlight for me was definitely Pittstail. It was the only place that was explicitly van friendly, which of course helps. But it's not just that. In fact, you've got the funicular railway there, which means that from car park to snow, you can be skiing in less than 10 minutes. It's pretty awesome. Without right having to drive all the way up to 2,700 meters. And despite the fact that it's the second smallest of the five, the skiing there is really good quality. You've got the most vertical and the longest single run of any of the resorts, and quite decent variety as well. And the views there are absolutely stunning. Of course, the weather helped the day I was there, but the weather was pretty good here yesterday in Hintertux, but I still preferred Pittstow. For anybody thinking of doing something similar, unfortunately van life is not the way to go. It's just not really a viable option here in Austria. You could base yourself in a campsite somewhere and head out from there, but there aren't that many campsites open this time of year anyway. And of course then you're fairly restricted to being in just one or two resorts as well. So your best bet is probably just to pick a resort, one of the bigger ones, find the cheapest possible accommodation you can, and then just use public transport to get up and down the hill from there. Public transport is good in Austria and it's free if you've got a ski pass, or at least if you've obviously got skis with you. So yeah, that, that'll work, but yeah, trying to van life it, it's not really gonna work. Unless you base up in Pittstown, of course. If freestyle is your thing, then Hintertux is the only way to go, really. And if ski racing is your thing, then, I mean, they're all good, but Solden's probably the place to go. If you like it remote, then Kunatau. So basically, they've all got their own positives and negatives, and they've all got their own different character, so there's plenty to choose from. If you are gonna base yourself in one resort, you've got a lot of choice. So that's probably what's great about it. I'm glad that I've been able to see them all and despite the problems of the van life this, this road trip has been good fun, it's been informative and hopefully you've enjoyed the videos as well. So I'm pleased to have completed the set, done all the Austrian Tyrol M5 but yeah maybe next year I'll be going to Italy instead. Remember my weekly snow reports will be up and running again in and around Chamonix as and when there's anything to report basically so stay tuned for them if that's something that interests you. But for now at least, time to recharge and get ready for winter again. So keep those fingers crossed for a great winter of Wiedersehen. Before this video is over, there's still one thing left for me to do. Remember this place? Perfect.